welcome to Artist Network Studio. I'm Linda Kemp and I would like to share with you some ideas that have helped me to simplify painting landscapes. So we're just filling this all in with color. This is the negative space around the tree. Let's get the other side done. Now I'm going to switch brushes and I'm picking up a smaller round brush. I want to make sure I don't have too much water in it and the same mixture. So there's my shape. Now I'm going to concentrate on cutting into it so my edge is what I'm thinking about. There we go. So there's my shape. There's the edge painted in. Now I'm going to go back and start to Add some of the smaller little cut marks in there. If you want to do a lot of um, a little more realistic looking tree, then you're going to add more and more of this, this, uh, these smaller marks. And we just continue to cut in. I'm working on dry paper because I want control of these edges. I want tight edges. It's the edges and the shape that tell the story when you're working in the negative. Okay, there we go. Now, captured inside negative. So if the trunk passes up from the base up to the top, I need to visualize a solid form working up there. And so that will give me an idea of where to place these little captured negatives that pop in the little holes, like so. Cover up your water, and then we're going to get into the badger brush. It's a dry brush, no dunking it in the water. And we're going to pick up a little bit of color. Let's just do this here. A little bit of, I'm going to take some blue. now. One of the, the first thing that I would suggest is that when you take one color, choose something quite different. So rather than taking, say, cerulean blue and cobalt blue, just a slightly different value, we want to sh shift the hue. So we're going to take a little bit of blue and let's take a little bit of violet. And I've got, so I've got violet on, the, uh, violet on this side and the blue on this side. Now I'm pressing it together. If you just automatically dunk from this side to this side and go onto the paper, you end up with something really hard. So we want to make sure that you mash these colors together a little bit so that the stroke is a little more subtle. We've got some of the blue, some of the violet, and in between is a nice transition. The brush stroke is down and I use the flat of the brush, not this edge. It's flat brush going down, like so. And I make, make it my purpose to brush, the brush stroke comes down, start at the right and sweep to the left. And I will pull this brush across for a little while and then I turn and I work from another direction and that gives me this nice tossing grass sort of a feeling to it. Even just the moisture on the paper with the dirty brush gives us a really pretty effect. Let's bring just a few little captured negatives, just like the spaces between the trees and the, between the branches into this area. Typically what I would be thinking about is the color that's behind this large bank of trees. That's the color that you'd see in behind it. That is going to look really bold and I'm not sure that that's where I want to be. So let's put it in. And then I can always change my mind afterwards. This is still damp. Now, just as it is, that transparent color on top of that, it doesn't look like much. It doesn't show up. So we need to add an opaque to it. You can add any opaque 
to a color and it will become an opaque. There we go. Hanging around those little trees. This is the kind of thing I get a big kick out of doing when I'm out painting on location. Is this kind of, I'm going to soften that just with my finger. There we go. And then an afternoon sitting outside painting, I have a, a small piece of plexiglass and I set it on my lap. I put my paints down on the ground beside me and I soak in the feeling of the day. And it is just heavenly. You feel like you're part of the landscape when you do it. I've got a bit of pink up in that area, so maybe I'll just put just a, a few touches of it. So all I did was I took the uh, quinacridone magenta that I had up here. I've added it into the Jean Briant number one, and that's made a nice kind of pinky tint so that I've got some variety in that section. I hope you're dying to try this too. Thank you.